Hello and welcome to Live Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. I don't have to tell you that we are living in some very challenging times these days, and that is certainly reflected in the many questions about life that you, our faithful viewers, have sent us, looking for answers from a biblical perspective. Well, we are here to address your questions today with a panel of local ministers who have been looking deep into the Word of God to share their insights with you. And I want to introduce them to you at this time. We're joined by Pastor Chris Langstaff of Bell Center Church of Christ, filling in for Greg Fox. Pastor Chris Ewing of County Line Church of the Brethren, located on the corner of Sandusky and Hardin Roads in Allen County. Next, Pastor Ben Neff, Youth and Young Families Pastor at Mount Tabor Church of God, located outside of Salina. Ben is filling in for Darwin Denton. And finally, rounding off our panel, Pastor John Maynard of the Family of Faith United Church, uh, I'm sorry, United Methodist Church in Lima, Ohio, and the Liberty Chapel, Chapel United Methodist Church on Sandusky Road. Having a little trouble with those names. <laughs> Happy to have you all with us today. <laughs> Now, let's begin by looking at the economy. Everybody else is. <laughs> um, this is a question that came in uh, that I think is totally apropos. It says, the effects of inflation are really starting to hit me. Starting, well, for others, it's been going on for a little while. My gas bill is up, food is up, and even though it's gone down a bit in price, gas is still high. I know we're not supposed to be of fear, and Christ supplies all of our needs, but how do I get over my anxieties through all of this? Who wants to tackle that one first? That's a pretty good question. Pretty much where the rubber meets the road these days. Yeah, a lot of, lot of people are really hurting right now. I think, you know, we could all probably go around and tell stories about how, you know, as pastors of churches, we're, we're trying to help and, and trying to do things we can. And the reality is a lot of folks are hurting today, um, but but also the, it's it's true to say that anxiety is nothing new. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have, have had some anxiety issues and, and some depression issues in the past. And, and I think if there's anything that, that we could say might be positive that has come out of uh, the COVID issue mm -hmm. that we're still kind of working through and coming out of oh, yeah. is the the fact that that mental health issues have kind of gone from the back burner. Uh, they, they've come to the forefront now. Mm -hmm. It's no longer, at least it shouldn't be any longer to address these mental health issues as taboo. Well, it's just not something that we talk yeah, about. Yeah. And especially for guys, it, it's mm -hmm. tough, you know, because we're supposed to be tough and we're supposed to be macho and we're supposed to be, and I don't know, the, you know, who, who, who exactly this person is, but, but the, the question there, the underlying question I think is, is how do I balance my faith that I know is supposed to be strong. I know Jesus supplies all my needs, but the reality is, you know, we're, we're struggling. And, and that puts a lot of people in some very unique situations. Um, and, and as I read this question, I immediately went to first Peter five, mm -hmm. humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. So that in the proper time, he may lift you up casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. And as somebody that has worked through some anxiety issues, I didn't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay, I cast all my anxieties on him. How do I do that? So my, my prayer started out is, God, I don't want this anymore. I, I don't want these anxious feelings in my life. And somebody was, well, just quit. Just, just don't be anxious anymore. <laughs> well, that'll make you more anxious. Why, <laughs> didn't, Thank you. <laughs> why didn't I think of that? You know, it, it, it's not that easy. You know, so, so it, it, it really helps us see that in order to do that, we have to ask God to do it. We have to ask Christ to take our anxiety. And as crazy as that sounds, sometimes we like to hang on to these things. We, we, like, we like to hang on to these anxious yes. feelings. Mm -hmm. And, and it, then it becomes like a little codependent relationship mm -hmm. where, where uh, you know, I, I get used to being anxious, so I keep it because it's safe. I know how I'm going to react. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. You know, Jesus, please take this, these anxious thoughts. Teach me what you would have me to learn. 
There's the humble yourself part of it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, because a, a lot of times we, we skip over that humble yourselves part and we go right to the cast your anxieties on him. Okay, it's an if then. Yeah. If you humble yourself, right. then you will be able to, to free yourself from these anxious thoughts and, and give them over to Christ and he'll see you through it. He did in my case. And, and it was, it was, it didn't happen overnight. It was, it was a, it was a lengthy process. But again, coming to the, where the rubber meets the road, the mm -hmm. reality part of it, maybe there are some things going on in, in your budget that you need to kind of tweak a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are some things that, I mean, cause I, we've had to cut back. We've had to, I, I've had to get rid of some things that, uh, that, that I, enjoyed honestly but sure. i didn't need them you know right. that that's all part of that humble yourself get lean learn how to how to survive and and in those times where you're looking at the bills you're looking at the checkbook you know god give me wisdom help me with this so the, the thing of it is we we take our anxiety and everything else that's bothering us we take it to the cross we lay it down then when we get ready to walk away and leave it there, we turn back and pick up a few things. Yes. We can't do without it. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to, to let God take it. Now, it's hard. Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight, like you said. But if you keep on working at it, it will come. And you, you have to have that relationship mm -hmm. where you know if I take it to God, he's going to take it from me. It may not be today, may not be next week, but he will. Right. So and, you've and, got to have the faith. And along with that, we, we've got to be careful to expect God to, to make it all go away. That, that's how we deal with issues. Right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm hurting. You know, God, please, please make all this go away. Sometimes yeah. he does. Absolutely. Sometimes he does. More often times than not, though, <laughs> he will walk with us through those issues. So when we come through the other side, we can look back on that time and yeah. say, God, you were with me every step of the way. And as, as much juice as we've squeezed out of that, you know, footprints poem, yeah. you know, there really is something to that. There, there really is something to that, to allow ourselves to be carried by Christ instead of, you know, maybe pulling ahead you know, uh, which, which I do run ahead of God, walk with him through it, have him teach you what he's going to teach you so you can come through the other side. Go ahead. Yeah. I tell you what, safety is an illusion. <laughs> That's what I say. Yeah. Safety is an illusion. And this person here, you're, you, what you thought was safe before is not as safe. You know, you were, you're never any safer, right? You know, right. You know, like five years ago when COVID, pre-COVID, we had a, a different president with lower taxes and we saw like an economy that was booming. You aren't any safer then as you are now. You know, we look at our outward circumstances. So we were trusting you, whoever wrote this question, I'm going to tell you, you were probably trusting a little too much in yourself. Uh, and, and I mean, I kind of harsh for out knowing you, but, but in a sense like, oh, I, you know, this, I look and I, everything's good. And I kick my feet up and relax. Kind of like the person who had that bumper crop and they're like, let me build a bigger barn. Yeah. God's like, mm -mm -mm -mm, tomorrow you're dying, you yeah. know, yeah. you're done for. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, like, I think we have this idea. Safety is in the arms of Christ. Mm -hmm. Safety is in trusting in the Lord with all our heart and leaning not on our own understanding. You know, uh, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. You know, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, 2, do not be anxious about anything, but everything with prayer and petition. So we are taking that to the Lord in prayer. We're asking him to say, all right, I can't see now. Things don't look good with my eyes. And I realized maybe I wasn't trusting you before. I was trusting in my own self. Yeah. And so it might be, as I try to say as tenderly as possible, he's, he's trying to bring you to the end of yourself. Mm -hmm. I think, it, you wow. know, going back to, you, you know, the aspect of you saying humble yourself and then you made a comment of is what do I need to learn in this moment? And that's what I, I like to try and point a lot of people that are going through struggles. And so here we're dealing with the inflation and all that stuff. And yes, you need to learn how to budget if you don't know how to do that and all those different things. But, <clears throat> you know, it's the aspect of you don't see God move a whole lot when things are perfect. You really don't. And so it's in your struggle. It's in the, the valley, in the shadows. It's when you're hurting that you see the miracles of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So 
Let's take that understanding and say, okay, God, in this anxiety, I cast everything on you. I take every thought captive, as Scripture says, and I measure it up to you, God. Now, what do you want me to learn through this? Because here's the thing, like, it's going to get worse. Even if it gets better, it's going to get worse. Like, we know as we get closer to the return of Christ, things are going to get worse. Mm -hmm. And so don't put false, you know, what you're saying, you you um, on things that are not finite or that are finite and not yeah. eternal and let's put them on the, the eternal God. But so we need to understand that during the Great Depression, the church fed more people than the government. Yes. Hmm. You know, hmm. during times of struggle, I didn't know that. <laughs> God's people actually do more good to help others than what any people organization can. And so I don't know about your guys' churches, but God has positioned my church very well um, for times like this. Now, are, are things rough at our church and our people? Yeah, I'm not saying that we, we got things. But I can see where God is, okay, yep, you've prepared us for this time, or you are preparing us now, and I can see where you are. And I'm always looking to that future. That's, that's kind of my gifting is be able to look, and I'm always communicating with our church leadership and, and saying, hey, here are some things to watch out for. And so maybe that is why this person that wrote this is, you know, feeling some of this anxiety. Because we also, even though we're supposed to throw all of our, cast all of our anxieties and worries on Christ, we also have to understand that some of those anxieties and worries come from him to give us warning. You know, and so we need to, yes, cast it on there. But, okay, God, why am I feeling this way? Maybe you are one that are supposed to start ringing the bell and having conversations within your church to say, hey, here are some things that I see down the pike that, I, that may or may not could be from God, but can you pray with me through this church leadership? Because maybe we can actually get ahead of this and in turn help more people and bring more people to Christ than what anything else versus if we stay in our anxiety and stay in our worry, then we're going to just see suffering. Okay, we're gonna pause right there and take a break, gentlemen. Sure. And uh, we'll be back with more on this subject right after this. Stay with us. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We are back now. We're having a discussion on the impact of inflation on our faith, on our faith and believing God and trusting God to meet our needs. When I was in television news, I, I can recall doing stories on inflation and like, and, and people didn't realize until inflation hit back there in the 80s it was what a big enemy inflation could be. Then after I left television, I became a financial advisor and I could see up front. I think what we uh, should look at, too, is while we're looking and waiting for God to meet our needs like we should, there may be a few items we could cut out of our budget and some things we can do ourselves, as you alluded to earlier, you think? Absolutely. And one of the things that, that struck out at me as, as we were talking before we came on here, you know, Jesus talked more about money in the Gospels than many, many topics. Mm -hmm. he, he talked about money quite a bit. Why is that? I wonder. <laughs> because it can lead us into a whole set of problems and, and they're all kind of wadded up together. I saw a commercial a couple nights ago on TV about a, a, some new credit card that you can apply for. And this gal said, I just got the so-and-so credit card. I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I, I'm nothing against going to Thailand, I guess, but are you really going to put a trip like that on a credit card, you know, and, and, the, and, and I just this past Sunday uh, preaching through the, the seven deadly sins and we talked about greed and, and how easily it can creep into our lives and all of our lives, when we give ourselves to Christ, everything comes under his lordship. Mm -hmm. you, you can't say that, that Jesus is against wealth. 
He's not. I mean, look at how many times God blessed Old Testament characters sure. with wealth. I mean, Abraham, Solomon, yeah. you know, Solomon's fortune, you know, makes Elon Musk's look like pocket change. Okay. So it, it can't, you know, God's not anti-wealth. Right. Um, but, but how does he, how do we, are we supposed to use what God has blessed us with? Right. And, and it's easy to kind of get soft and, and start to accumulate things. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a big yeah. danger there. And, and again, I, I am not speaking to the, you know, this person is talking about real needs, you know, paying the bills versus, you know, sur surviving. Right. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a very fine line there, but, but kind of Bill, to your point, you know, maybe there are some things that, that we, we put our faith in that we shouldn't be, yeah. that we're relying on. You talked about going to Thailand, and I can tell you that it's a big bill going to Thailand. I went to Thailand two years ago to conduct a wedding over there, oh, wow. and it is a big bill. If you know something's coming down the pike and you start saving up for it in advance, that can help. Well, yeah, that's the key, though, saving up for it, not, <laughs> not charging it, not going in debt. And it's, and it's times like this when inflation um, really kind of hits and then the economy kind of goes down and your 401k, if you got one, is getting hit and all these things that you really start realizing debt is bad. Yes, you know, it is. And, and that it can tie you down. And, it's bondage. Um, you know, I, I live on um, a, a great piece of property. We've, we've got several acres. And, but I have these vines that grow everywhere. Like trumpet vines, grape vines, um, you know, your cucumber, viney things, whatever. And I planted a few trees. And, and it, it, I was gonna use this for a sermon thing, so you can steal this if you want. <laughs> um, but like, so I've got some Evervites, just small ones, and these vines will actually overtake it and actually have pulled it down to the ground and be flat. Ooh. And, and that's what debt does to you. Yes. It, like it, it actually comes on you and it pulls you down and it keeps you from growing and keeps you from moving anywhere or receiving the sun, Jesus' light, that mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. blessings that he has. And so, in it, but you don't really notice that when things are good. You don't see that vine creeping up a little bit. It's when it actually gets a hold of you and pulls you down. And inflation during, especially this time when gas prices and all these other things are going up, food prices, you know, that you're realizing, wow, that car payment or that credit card debt or, mm -hmm. you know, all these things are stopping me from actually doing the things that I want to do or that God has called me to do. And so you really need to be, you know, as churches, we need to be educating people more on how to wisely handle finances yeah. for these kind of things that, so it doesn't create anxiety. Right. The right. Bible speaks to finances 2,300 times. Mm. And there is more said about uh, money in the New Testament, not, not just the words of Christ, right. but right. overall, more said in the New Testament about money than heaven and hell combined, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to be sure. Uh, so there, there needs to be a lot of teaching, I think, going out uh, about that good stewardship. Um, let, let, let's, uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, well, you know, any when, answers when, you wanna... when times are going right, you don't have a problem throwing money here or throwing money there. And then when things start getting tight, you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I spent all that money. Yep. Well, start yep. putting it back. Right. And, and I mean, we've cut a lot of stuff out. Uh, my wife says my car never sits still. So since gas prices are up, I choose wisely mm -hmm. on where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and even picking a car that it's not a gas gas. I mean, there are cars, some, some cars out there now that they're so powerful, they'll pass everything but a gas station. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Unless you absolutely have to, you should probably not buy a car right now. <laughs> <laughs> Prices are so high. Yeah. Well, you know, I was wanting a new car, but I, I started looking and I'm going, I'm not paying that. Yeah. Let's turn uh, to another t type of perhaps more, more, more delightful. He, a viewer question that came in. Um, I'm a college age girl. I am too old for the high school youth group and don't really feel comfortable with the adult group. There are a few churches in town that offer young adult groups, but all in all, I feel like it's tough to be a young adult Christian in this area. Can you give me advice on how to get through this age transition? Yeah, yeah I'd love to talk about that. One, I would say, uh, you are certainly not alone and you are certainly correct. To be a young yes. person today, um, when, I, when I think of that, you know, I'm guess 18 to 25 is a very tough yeah. age. Mm -hmm. It is a transition time and so forth. Um, one of my responsibilities at church is to kind of look at our Christian ed setup and then really cradle to 
almost grave curriculum, you know, looking at what setups we have, what kind of classes we have for people. And so I'm going to generally speak, and I want to speak to this person hopefully directly a little bit, um, but, you know, we, we don't do you a service. Youth ministry, I'm hoping there's some pastors. Listen, youth ministry is a peninsula, not an island, okay? Mm. It's Florida, not Hawaii. Right. Okay, break that down. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? It means that we are always connected to the main body and we do a disservice to our youth, to this person who asked this question, by making them youth group and have separate youth services and separate everything. We need to be integrating into the regular worship because they don't have a good transition and they don't have connections and relationships. So um, one thing that I did, it's kind of out of the box as we switched up. I don't teach youth Sunday school. I'm teaching a men's class right now. Well, I have some 16 year old people that, that I got a 16 year old couple and they're over six, five. All right. They're six foot five and they're in the youth area. We're towering over kids. Well, they've got the man voice and everything. Guess what? At 16, they're joining the man's class. They're being a part of that class. Um, and so they're getting connections with other adults before they get to age 18. Then it's like, well, good luck to you. Mm -hmm. And so we're, mm -hmm. we need to be creative with that. You know, we went to the Creation Museum in the Ark. Well, guess what? The parents came along, adults came along, and it was a it was 50-50 among kids and adults going to it. There are <laughs> healthy interactions that are taking place there. And that's really flipping on its head with what a lot of we do in ministry in our churches where we isolate. I've actually been a youth ministry in my church and I stepped down and came back. And so what is the biggest change? I'm making sure we're connected to the, the, the adults and the others in the church as well. You know, in school, we are always connected um, with like our own age group, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's the only place that ever is like that. As soon as you graduate, it's like, all right, now you're out in the society. I mean, they sit around the table are very different ages, I won't guess, but very different ages amongst us, and that's a normal part. But for someone who's 18 years old transitioning, that's weird for them. Mm -hmm. So now to speak to that person directly, just briefly, I would encourage you to push through that awkward transition, um, not be afraid to just step out and look into what opportunities are out there. We are really called to mentor and be mentored. So I would I encourage you to look for maybe not someone your own age, but maybe someone older than you that could mentor you. That's mm -hmm. what the Bible talks about. All right. But then even look at some of those youth come up. Maybe you can connect with them as well and, and, and look and see. But I would say it's, you're going to have to push through. It's going to be awkward. It's going to be tough. And you're going to have to seek those out. Um, you know, right. Yeah. yeah. And. You know, a lot of what you're saying is really, it's great because, you know, I've been in youth ministry too, and that's a lot of what we have seen is, is that, well, you know, the youth are over there and they can do this. And that, that would really kind of aggravate me a lot because it was the adults volunteering the youth to do things in the church, but they would never come and partner with right. them. The you know, well, they didn't want to do. Yeah. Like, set up they chairs. can set up tables and chairs. Yeah. Well, why? And like, there and so are. I always push back like, hey, how about you actually come and help us and yeah. tell us yeah. how to do and, and on the adult side, it is, I, I want to stress, it is us adults that actually have to engage with the younger generations, okay? That is our responsibility. We cannot expect them to come to us. And that's the other thing. Well, the youth should come and serve the older people, you know? And, and I, I used to have um, older people in the church that would be mad and they would be like, you know, not at my current church, of course, you know, if you're watching. <laughs> no, but they would say, hey, you know, I, you know, I can't shovel my walkway. I need somebody to come shovel my walkway. And they, nobody's come, no, none of these kids. And I looked at them and I was like, well, school is canceled. What parent in the right mind of school is canceled is going to let their kid go drive on the roads where it's not safe for buses to come and shovel your walkway, yeah. you know? And, but that was the expectation. Well, yeah. these younger kids can do and serve and help us. No, listen, you are supposed to make disciples, not have slaves. And, um, and so I encourage like of adults, if you don't have some of these things going on in our church, like we're not perfect at it by any means, but, um, we have you serving and in, in our main service, um, on the worship team in the sound room and the greeters and different things like that, um, in aspects. But yeah, for this young lady, I would also ask her, um, pray, seek the Lord, what if you're the one that is seeing it because you're the one that's supposed to do something mm, that, about that's it? That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. You know, like start start a college age group, take it. Yeah. Okay. Because those are hard. Because once yeah. once she starts it, she is going to get older, right? <laughs> she is no longer going to be that age, and then it has to start again. And that's the hard thing about these things. If you don't intertwine it into 
part of the adult program because we do not have somebody designated to say this is your you know whatever you know it, it will fall to the wayside every few years as these sure. people get older here's you know, I, I was oh, go ahead. I, I was brought up in the back hills of kentucky and and it, it was you know children are to be seen and not heard mm. you know, yeah, yeah. just you can't you can't come in and join in with the adults and everything and so it was hard for me going through school I, I didn't talk to you unless you talked to me. And it wasn't until I became a Christian. At 48 years old, that I start letting my tongue just talk. <laughs> and, you know, it goes back to that old saying, uh, be a friend, make a friend, lead a friend to Christ. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's very, very important that we put ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. No one else is going to put us out there. We need to put ourselves out there. We need to make a difference, and that's going to change the way you feel. You're, you're going to feel like you're being accepted, like you're not being ignored. People don't have time for you. Just jump out there and do it. Okay. Here's a question. I mean, it's quite late, but let's see what we can do with this very quickly. Um, it is really difficult for me to watch my children turn away from Christ, and now I am watching my grandchildren grow up not even knowing about God. How can I be a witness when they don't want to hear about Jesus? We've got about two minutes. I can give you my Go three ahead. bullet points here. I love bullet points. Be holy, you know, mm -hmm. be consistent, mm -hmm. and be generous. You know, yes. Live Break a holy down. life, mm -hmm. be holy, be, be consistent about your walk yes. so they don't see hypocrisy in you, and generously give because that's what our... Father in heaven does. And when they see those things, you know, they're not, if they turn away, it's on them and their hearts, but you're not being a roadblock for them. Right. You yeah. know, I, I, I was raised in a Christian home and, and, and my mom, you know, she'd pull the Bible out, she'd read it. I'd sit there and listen to her. And then my great grandma, she, she would be up in, in, in the loft of the barn churning butter and reading her Bible at the same time. I thought, well, there must be something to this. But uh, we, we need to make sure that we set the example for our kids, for our grandkids, and take them to church. Mm -hmm. Take them to church. I, I don't recall who it was that said it, and I'm really good at doing this, but uh, preach the gospel always. Amen. If necessary, use words. <laughs> okay. Yes. Very good. On that note, we're going to have to end it. Thank you very much, and I hope we've helped somebody with that question because I just sensed that that's a broken-hearted woman over her children and grandchildren, and I hope this helps you a lot. Well, that's it for today. We'll be back again, of course, next time, and uh, we hope you'll tune in for another panel of great ministers just like these ministers were. We'll look forward to being with you then. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.